Our top story, Washington, D.C. is on the edge ahead of one of the most critical inauguration ceremonies in the history of the United States. Following the deadly insurrection at the U.S. Capitol by pro-Trump rioters, serious security concerns have now gripped Washington. The U.S. Capitol witnessed several National Guard soldiers arriving from the East Coast as tightest security measures were in place for the inauguration. All 50 U.S. states and the District of Columbia are on alert for possible violent protests ahead of the inauguration on Wednesday. Many militia and extremist groups told their followers to stay at home, citing the increased security or the risk that the planned events were law enforcement traps. Meanwhile, a crackdown on pro-Trump rioters continues. The FBI has arrested the founder of the group Cowboys for Trump. A New Mexico official, Ku Griffin, was arrested after the FBI found out that he was part of the group that entered the restricted areas of the U.S. Capitol. The Capitol building was evacuated on Monday after smoke was seen rising from behind. The smoke appears to have come from a nearby fire. The Washington, D.C. Fire Service immediately responded to a fire nearby, which has now been extinguished. The D.C. Fire Department said in a statement that there were no injuries in the incident and added that this accounts for smoke that many have seen. This fire near the U.S. Capitol building has now prompted a swift lockdown during the ongoing rehearsals for Inauguration Day ceremonies. Just a day before Joe Biden is inaugurated as the new president, the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. is on a lockdown owing to the security threats. Reporters at the scene say that an emergency announcement is playing and a rehearsal for the inauguration has been suspended entirely. Security is tight, with thousands of National Guard members deployed. An alert circulated to the Capitol staff said that the complex was on lockdown with no one being allowed in or out. The unprecedented ramp-up in security continues after the FBI warned of possible armed marches by pro-Trump supporters across state capitals in the U.S. For more on this, we are now being joined live by our correspondent Jagruti Dave from Washington, D.C. Jagruti, thanks so much for joining us. Now we're just a day away from President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. Give us a sense of preparations on ground, especially with respect to security in the capital. Yeah, I mean, you look at the streets of Washington, D.C., and it doesn't look like uh, it's a preparation for uh, an inauguration. Normally, you would have the streets thronging with visitors coming to witness this historic moment. But now what we're seeing is streets around the capital area, blocks and blocks um, of uh, of streets um, essentially having um, the National Guard law mm -hmm. enforcement as the predominant presence. Um, you're seeing the streets around the capital often deserted later on in the evening. Um, there's real um, sense of security. And I think as you described in that incident where the capital was on lockdown temporarily, um, they are very, very concerned about any possible threats mm -hmm. to the event. Right. Now, First Lady Melania Trump has made her farewell remarks, and yet the Trump snub of Biden and his, its nature is historic and unprecedented and almost dissolves the ritual of transfer of power in the United States. So will they ever acknowledge Biden as a new president before leaving the White House? I think it's um, very unlikely that they will. We have two days left and there has been no indication uh, of, an acknowledge, of an acknowledgement of uh, Joe Biden as the next president. Mm -hmm. um, it is customary for the first lady to show the incoming um, first lady around the quarters of the White House. Um, the Melania Trump has not done this like her husband. She too has broken with tradition. Right. Um, so uh, it's, uh, you know, and, and the fact that President Trump is not even attending his successor's inauguration, mm -hmm. I think it shows that it's very, very unlikely that they will acknowledge um, the, the, the Bidens as the next uh, incumbents of the White House. Right. Now, uh, Jagruti, tell us a bit about Trump's last few executive orders and pardons in particular, and what are the key policies which Biden is likely to reverse in the first few days in office? Yes, yeah, so one of the executive orders, in fact, that has just been um, announced in the last few hours or so is the uh, reversal, uh, the, pl the president's plan mm -hmm. to reverse the uh, COVID-19 travel restrictions on the UK, Europe and Brazil. But right. uh, pretty soon afterwards, the incoming White House uh, secretary said that uh, they would, block. press secretary said that the Biden administration would block that, mm -hmm. saying that now was not the time to, uh, 
ease up on travel restrictions given the rising cases of COVID-19. Um, we are expecting possible uh, a slew of pardons from President Trump as well. This is according to CNN, around 100 pardons or so they report that President Trump is expected to announce in his last two days. Some of the, uh, uh, some of the policies that Joe Biden might reverse are around immigration, uh, around rejoining the Paris Climate Accord um, mm -hmm. and um, uh, potentially renewing uh, relations, uh, renewing um, the US's efforts to uh, get back to some kind of nuclear deal with Iran. Those are the sorts of things that um, it's expected uh, the Biden administration will try to reverse. Mm -hmm. Right, Jagrati, my final question. What can we expect will be the key message in Biden's inaugural address to the country on the 20th? I think we can expect to hear what we've heard a lot uh, in the past, which is that message of unity and coming together. Um, this has been a motif of all of Biden's speeches. You mm -hmm. saw um, his address to the nation after he um, uh, he declared that he had won uh, the race uh, for the White House. And he's talked about how he wants to be a president for all Americans, not uh, and he, this the, the challenges that the country faces isn't just about red states and blue states. So I think I think we are likely to hear more of that kind of um, rhetoric from Joe Biden. But of course, given the divisions in the country as they are, you know, the most particularly highlighted in those riots on January the 6th, uh, right. Joe Biden has a huge challenge mm -hmm. uh, of trying to unite this country in front of him. Right, absolutely. All right, Jagadhi, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. And we at Vion, of course, will continue to track all the live updates once the inauguration gets underway. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.